So, what has been productive in Spain? First thing I want to talk about is Autonomo. Autonomo is self-employment. The self-employment paperwork is going through at the moment. Once I'm self-employed, I would basically wait three months, get social security payments that are paid to the state, take that down to the foreigner's office here, along with my request for residency, and they just go, oh yeah, fair enough, you're earning enough, you're paying tax, you're paying social security, uh, there you go, you're a resident. That then helps April's paperwork and the kids' paperwork to become EU citizens. So, well, residents, then citizens. Once they're citizens, I'll be quite happy. You know, EU passports. Um, because there's a bilateral agreement between Spain, the Philippines, Argentina, etc. It's former colonies. So they can actually become citizens of Spain within one to two years which once it's done and dusted we have no travel issues because uh, obviously a Filipino passport is pretty useless um, in comparison to EU ones um, but also Spain the Spanish Latin world is huge um, it's a bit of the world that a lot of people don't acknowledge exists a lot of the time but this is why I'm interested in it because Spain I find interesting, but I'm interested in seeing some of the other bits and pieces. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's one of the success stories that's actually underway at the minute. My work contract. My work contract, um, I may have picked one up for February. My work's a bit odd because what happens is somebody requests a quote. I send them a quote with the information they then don't talk to me for two months, then they'll come back and go, can you start on Tuesday? That is normal. So they've said, oh, yeah, we'd like you to come in and have a look at this. And then you go, okay, well, have a look at this and see if this is what you're looking for. And then heard nothing for two weeks. That is normal because what's happened is they've got what they want. They'll come back with a timetable when it suits them. No, it's not the best, best way to do business, but at the same time, Every company's done it to me for the last 10 years. Um, they haven't turned around and set a timetable for the year or something. In fact, some of them have actually lost me to other competitors because other competitors have just gone, can you start Monday? And then these guys go, oh, you know we were talking about this three months ago. Can you come in? No, I'm already under another contract now for the next two months. Huh? And it, this, this is how I ended up working for Carillion because they realized that all the good guys are always busy. So they tried to employ, well, I, they employed me um, to retain me. But at the same time, it didn't work because A, they don't pay me enough, but B, there's a lot of other reasons with the business I didn't like. Um, so contract-wise, that's come up. So that's a positive. A website I'm about to start working on. I put the website up. I just haven't done the work I should have done because of disruptions. But now I'm going to sit and focus and getting it up and running the way I want. Because once it's up and running, April can sit and take some of this stuff off me. Because I do all the hard bits. <laughs> That's a bit unfair, actually. Um, I do the technical side. Um, I'd say April does the hard bits because she does the monotonous stuff. The stuff I hate, so she, you know, like descriptions of items, April will sit and do that. Uh, transcription, April will do that. Uh, so, yeah, I would say April does the odd bit. I do the technical bit of just getting it up and running, getting the first ones in so I can show April this is what I'm looking for, and then April does the rest. Um, so, yeah, that was a bit unfair. But what, what am I looking for out of the website? over the next six to 18 months, going from zero income off it up to a thousand, maybe more. Because once the income starts generating, um, I'm gonna re keep reinvesting it to increase it. Uh, that's, I'll be honest with you, if you've got a business that is not making money, a big money, um, roll the capital in it, do not touch it. Increase your business size from within. I took a furniture shop with an initial investment of four hundred and fifty pounds to two and a half thousand pounds worth of stock in a week. 
um, because as things sold, I went back to the wholesaler and brought new stuff, and I just kept expanding and expanding. Within six months, I'd made £120,000 because of 450 that I just kept rolling. Um, so if you've got a small business and it's not really growing, call center. When we start with a call center with only a few computers, we took our old computers out the uh, our old internet calf and used the same PCs to get started. And then we started re replacing the computers, then recycling the old ones. You know, we end up we start with like say five old machines, start making some money. So I bought a new sh machine a week got up to 10 people, um, 10 computers, six of which were the old and four new. And then I started replacing the six old with new. Then those six old ones started another cell of call center agents until eventually we had 45 brand new machines and they gave all the old machines to the local school. Um, but yeah, that's the best way is rolling the income if you can. Um, not getting used to spending it, you see move away from spending it, use it as an investment plan. Uh, what else has been going on? It's, oh, the the vehicle. The vehicle's a positive one. You know, the Volkswagen 2B camper. Uh, that's quite funny, actually, because camp is sort of like a gay thing in the UK, so being camp is like very gay, so that was actually the wrong terms of phrase there. <laughs> Um, no, not to be camper, but to be a v, VW camper. Um, it's it's a vehicle I'm going to have to invest a bit of money in, and that's what's sort of scaring me, because I, once I get involved in something, I try to change it, upgrade it, work on it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I'll oh, just get this, I'll just, and I'm like, stop it, because you've got to get the other stuff going first. At the moment... The vehicle has got some other bits and pieces coming at the moment. Once those go in, that'll probably be me till March, April before I'll invest anything else in it. Um, I need to look at the engine, get the engine tidied up. Uh, but beyond that, doesn't need any money spent on it uh, right now. It's it went through its uh, roadworthy test with no complaints whatsoever so I'm expecting no issues with that what I want to do though is clean out the injectors or replace the injectors and just get it up and running so it's smooth and running get the head um, timing belts changed uh, just bits and pieces uh, but am I going to rip the seats out I'm going to take one of the seats out uh, for now we're going to take the there's a fold out one that goes on the door I'm going to take that out because we can fit the cool box in there. Uh, I'm not going to take the middle row out at the moment. And I'm looking at sorting the roof rack out because we're going to um, go camping, for example. I think I'll put a kitchen unit in there because we've got a, a gas stove coming. Um, I bought a table and stuff you've seen in the video. We just need another a tent or something as a bit of accommodation, and then it, it's functional for the summer. Uh, and that's that's it. You know, it doesn't need to be renovated straight away. Why would I invest money in the VW? Firstly, it's got a following. Um, so anything I invest in it, I will actually get a return on it. I didn't pay a lot for it, although it's cost me three thousand euros roughly. That's it's on the road. It's insurance, it's uh, ITV, it's ITV being the roadworthiness, the purchase of it, the tax, everything, you know, it's all in 3000 uh, for the next six months. That means that basically it's cost me 2000 well, it's 2200 to actually buy the vehicle, which is about, what, 1500 quid? 1500 quid in the UK doesn't buy a lot. I've been looking at ones that are in a similar condition in the UK. Some of them have been as much as £7,000. Uh, now, if you bear in mind, if I rip out the seats and change the side panels, you know, put in 
the the nice plush uh, little cupboards and stuff for a camper van that will increase the value of that significantly and one of the advantages I have is I can make all of it myself I just want I'll just have to sit and measure it all because I can do all the carpentry work myself um, but like I said try not to spend money on that so things have been progressive just not as much as it could be the call center stuff isn't as progressive uh, as I would like um, but then again that's the nature of the beast so the thing is when I left out the Philippines several other people um, I mean I talked about one of the guys that let me down um, even though he's getting paid $500 a week it, he continued on his own we started so a lot of these people when they upset you and disappear they go and do stuff on themselves because they think oh well I can do this on my own stuff Matt um, but it, he's now having to go overseas because <laughs> it just hasn't worked out not that I'm sort of like rubbing it in it's just the fact that it's ended up failing see the problem I have you see if it's not going to be a cash generator I won't do it and the call center industry sort of changed over a period of time this is why you'll see a lot push on virtual assistants um, virtual assistants with different people because they've moved the business model from the telemarketing telesales because it's been saturated it's been hammered um, it's, they destroyed it themselves the call center industries have destroyed their own market I do not know why they were so stupid in doing it uh, because it, it's, there's money in it but don't get me wrong but it's just not worth the hassle for the telemarketing stuff I know people still making money on it but you try calling me and as soon as I hear that I'm calling you today I've already hung up uh, and that's basically basically it what I'm after is the good stuff the help desks the um, FM stuff very hard to get hold of but once you get it it builds itself but that's why that is not a priority because it takes so long to get, actually get a bit of status on it so yeah call center stuff slow going Am I fast? Not really. What I need to do is get stuff moving in Spain first, and then I'll worry about the call center. Like I said, we own the building, we own the computers. It doesn't cost me nothing for it to sit there until I've found a niche that I'm happy with. We've done the transcription, we can do transcription very easily. We've done. Um, video editing we've done um, graphics design etc all those th things are still there uh, but I'm sitting there and I've seen some other niches that don't need the call center I can do it myself and you know you and you think hang on a minute but don't you say to outsource depends what you're doing I've got several apps that I can develop myself and they're for a very specific niche market and they're not complicated apps because a lot of these people are uncomplicated um, in the sense that they don't know what they're doing so if they've got an app they'll actually do it for them they'll, they'll love it so but it doesn't need a lot of people to do it so and to get the understanding of how that works is not easy to do because this is where a lot of software fails because the software guy sits there and develops what he's told he does not understand how that fits into a business the guy that understands it in the business doesn't know how to come to make the software guy understand what he needs to be doing as such you end up with a product that really does not help them um, they can't really work together in that sense this is why there's so many bits of software out there that just fail or they're sold into businesses and then they just don't function properly 
because a, a manager or a director has made a decision on a piece of software for a help desk, for example, and they didn't engage with anybody in the help desk to actually ask them what they wanted or what do they need to be able to do. So you end up with some unfunctional software. Um, so I've got stuff like that I'm working on. The, the Raspberry Pi stuff is intriguing me at the moment. I've got, I'm sort of stuck because I'm waiting on other bits and pieces arriving. It should have arrived already. Um, but some of that stuff, once you start seeing what I'm doing with it, you may even pick up some ideas for what you can do with it. Because um, I'm quite happy to share that for those that switched on enough to understand what's going on. Uh, because there's a lot of things you can do. Um, I'm thinking sensors. I'm thinking facilities management. But there's a whole ream of stuff you can do uh, once you start learning how to program these things. And it's mainly down to the cost. The cost is so cheap that you can't really go wrong with it. Also, yeah, I'll leave it at that for that. But so, that where, although it doesn't seem I've been doing a lot lately, it, there is a lot of stuff going on in the background, and there's bits and pieces. The dog food stuff, sort of, up in the air because my my friend's actually sick. Um, he's got a long term illness, so I'm not even sure that's going to develop now, which is. A bit frustrating, but at the same time, the guy, the guy's health is more important. So I'll see what happens. I'm, um, I've got to move forward now because it's already been too much time invested in that. But anyway, thanks for watching.